everybody welcome back to another video now in today's video I'm picking up where I left off last time I'm working on the underside of the roof as I mentioned before it's dangerously close to collapse or it was I've got the cross brace in I'm going to continue working my way across with the new rafters yeah so we're gonna we're gonna save this roof basically from literally collapsing right, let's get started And hopefully we don't lose that roof sheet that's on the barn. It's really whipping about. And this is that noisy old sheet. It's doing its job, but it really is winding me up. I've just checked it, it looks okay, but it might be a bit noisy. So this is our new cross brace. I managed to get it fixed there in the last video. Just got to come down to the other end and get it fixed there. Now the bonus of putting this in is it goes through the cottage into the barn and it picks up with all the damaged timbers on the other side Get it right. so we're supporting an extra two rafters with that cross brace so that's really going to help out and will assist me when I come to repair in this section okay let's concentrate with this side for now so I'm going to Get the scaffold in closer and we're going to put another bracket round here get it fixed in place and then we'll see about putting extra rafters along here this is our cross brace our purling this is the bracket that fits on simply slides over i'll get a fix in into the a-frame and then a fixing in the side there it doesn't hold any real weight but just keeps it you know securely in place getting up yeah, I just got to watch myself because there's a few tiles that are hanging on the edge so let me show you what I mean See those tiles are pretty precarious maybe reach up and pull them down first things first I get this fixed we can start strengthening up this this area here I'm just going to pop a couple of temporary screws in here when I'm happy that it's in its right location I shall nail it as you can see it's just picked up on the underside of the rafter further along which is perfect okay here's one I cut earlier right now I have to be careful because there is nails sticking out from the tiles and they're just catching just to make things a little bit more difficult uh, snap the nail I might lose the tile so That's where I don't want it. Ah, oh, got past yet, that's good. Okay, now this timber is on its side, which isn't ideal, but it's a lot better than what's there at the moment. And don't forget, it is assisting, it's not taking all the weight, it's kind of half the weight, so. We're up to the top ridge anyway, so that ridge at the top is taking the weight. Purling there is taking the weight in the middle, get some brackets on there and then if I go down it's picking up here on the main purling so that is doing its job here that's what I'm going to replicate right the way across it will vary as to whether or not I can lay them on this side or whether they've got to be on their back like this one but whatever I put in here it's doing its job and it's it's reinforcing this whole area which is desperately needed so this is the additional raft I just put in now once it comes below this pearl in here these two rafters here are the sides for my Velux window now I have to put a trimmer across the top like a header so what I have to do is join each rafter in this section to the top of the trimmer so that will tie all that together and then just down the bottom I'll just cut this one and we'll put a new trimmer in cut that one and it will join into that one after all these tiles are took out so a little bit fiddly but once I get my measurement right it'll be plain sailing
very important a set square with this sort of work. Okay. Well, the wind's getting up. And because I can't run a timber across here at the moment, I'm gonna put some angle brackets on. Square it all up, and that way I know that that opening is where the wind is gonna go, and it's not gonna move. Then I can work above and secure that area. If I step back a little bit, you can see what I mean. That's gonna be the opening in relation to the rest of the roof. So I just square it off, pop one of these on, and then I know it's not gonna move. Make sure I don't go down the trap door and all. Perfect. So we just screw up the second bracket. So just temporary. Nothing worse than something moving about when you're trying to measure. So right, we have got ourselves nearly a frame or a square for our opening. So my next job is to cut two new rafters in between here. So pick up from that one, pass there into the ridge beam and the same down to this point here. Now I know how long to cut them. It's plain sailing. I'm just going to set myself up a bit of a framework so it allows me to cut the four meter lengths of timber on my saw. Just prop me saw up a little bit, one side, and it'll be a nice level surface. Struck it lucky there. Couple of wedges, bit of a gap here. Don't forget this project is still being powered just by the sun. Not used any electricity from the mains on this, using the eco flows, got several units admittedly, and they charge sort of uh, independently. But nevertheless, no power has been consumed on this project, which I think is pretty good and achievable. Thanks to eco flow. No, this is not a paid, <laughs> paid video before you all start screaming. And it remains my philosophy on this job to try and keep what we call the carbon footprint or you know the wastage down really and consuming too much especially electricity especially with the price so yeah it is doable it is achievable but you do need one of these units um, and you have to keep on top of charging them make the most of the sun through the day if you want to charge your batteries up you know with your power tools because once the sun goes down you know you're just relying on the the storage capacity. While the sun's out, depends on what panels you've got. I've probably got about 300 watt per hour trickle charge into these units, so it does top them up. But yeah, right. Now this big one powers this, so I think this is, I can't remember now, it's about 12, 1300 watt, maybe more. But this has got a surge capacity, so it doesn't have to be sort of flat out all the time on it. Right, let's get it plugged in. Just hope I've charged it there after all this build up. Plugger on, yep, turn on. OK, 
Okay, let's try this one. Now, once again, I've offered up an off cut in the gap, and it's got to be laid up. This one has got to be laid on its back. Normally, the strength is on the deepest part, and they'd be laid like that. Unfortunately, I can only get them in like that, but still better than nothing. And like I say, they are just assisting the ones that are, are okay apart from the snapped one. So I'm going to put these close to the snapped one. The weight is spread across on the purlin there anyway, the new purlin cross brace. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm more than happy of installing them like that. There's no other option. having to do with the rafters is slide them down below the bottom purling and then slowly come underneath and up and behind all of this thus avoiding the nails that are sticking out of the tiles if I snap them off I'll lose the tile so a little bit tricky hmm it's not difficult but it's just fiddly Wow, just about went in now. Hopefully it's gonna hold. No, yes. And that was a result. So they all go in like that. So I've managed to weave it behind all the nails and timbers. Let's just go up to the ridge beam now. And that is another one in. So I'm gonna finish this section off so in the next video we can actually put that Velux in. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe, see you then.